Welcome to Animal X. We've all heard stories of a creature called Bigfoot. Thousands of witnesses all over the world claim to have laid eyes on a giant primate, half man, half beast. Is it the stuff of myth or one of nature's best kept secrets? Hundreds of researchers are determined to find out. When I saw something move behind a tree, I had to look up at it. There's something going on out in the woods, you know. It's not a question of belief. I've examined physical evidence that indicate that, yes, there is a primate out there. Surely they can't all be wrong. Is this the face of Bigfoot? Join us as we search for the unidentified North American primate. Large hairy primates have been spotted all over the world. From the steppes of Siberia to the jungles of Vietnam, from the Himalayan heights to the Australian outback. They're known as Almas, Yetis, Noirang, a Yawe. But in the US, it's best known as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Mainstream science scoffs at the possibility of an unidentified North American primate. There are no free-roaming primates of any kind in North America. <laughs> or so they say. But other experts are sure something's definitely out there. The Pacific Northwest has always been considered the Bigfoot capital of the United States. It was here, in Washington State, that Daniel and Animal X team and the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization discovered a body print believed to have been made by an enormous primate. Listen to this. We were just about ready to leave when we noticed that the rest of this looked like it had hair in it, hair imprints. And finally it dawned on us that this is something that, that isn't a bear. It sat down on its butt. The team demonstrates the position they believe the creature lay in. From the indentations in the soil, they establish that it was big and heavy, laying down while reaching for the fruit. The excitement of the find filters through the team. A Bigfoot body imprint is a rare find. The Skookum cast, as it's known, is said to contain the impression of Bigfoot's butt, thigh, and heel. A pretty astonishing discovery. But forget the Pacific Northwest for now. 2,000 miles away, a new Bigfoot hotspot has been identified in Texas. You may think Texas is a barren landscape, but in the eastern part of the state, where most of the Bigfoot sightings take place, there are nearly 12 million acres of dense forests. That's where I'm sending Daniel and Natalie. Their mission? Track down the elusive creature and if luck permits, bring back the evidence. It's incredible to think that there have been Bigfoot-type sightings all over the world, not just in America. They've been everywhere. Yeah, that's right. From Indonesia, Borneo, Mongolia, Tibet, Australia, Russia even. Yeah, there's, there's stories of these, these huge apes from everywhere, all around the world. Nearly every continent's got them. What exactly could this creature be? Daniel and Natalie are in Texas talking to wildlife journalist and Bigfoot researcher Chester Moore. What we've found is a lot of footprints, a lot of uh, tracks in the woods, a lot of limb twists, a lot of limb markers and that kind of stuff. And uh, it's, been, it's been pretty compelling evidence to suggest there's something going on out in the woods, you know. I'm a journalist, that's what I do for a living. I'm a wildlife journalist. I'm pursuing a story here. And there's either the biggest fakery in history going on, 
uh, there's uh, an undiscovered primate roaming around, and I will stake my reputation on what I found that, yes, there is an undiscovered primate roaming around North America, and the best evidence, I would say, is probably the footprints. I mean, there's a lot of variation, a lot of variation in size. You get, there, there are a lot of skeptics that say, well, how come all the Bigfoot tracks you see on TV are 15, 18 inches long? Because that's what the researchers are showing. That's their best cast. But I found tracks that are five and a half inches long. I found them that are 11 inches long, 20 inches long. So there's a lot of variation. To me, that shows there's a species, not just one animal. Because you'd be surprised how many people think there's a Bigfoot, like one Bigfoot roaming around doing all this. You know, or it's a legend of a Bigfoot, but it's a species. And the quicker we start treating it like a species, the closer we'll be to solving the mystery. So do you have a theory on the southern variant of Bigfoot? In the southern United States, you tend to get more of a, a different, slightly different look than the northwest where the term Bigfoot was invented. You have an animal that's reported to be a little bit more slender. I mean, they're still kind of steroided up, crazy looking ape, but you know, you have animals a little bit more of a, of a slim build. You have long hair coming off the head in many of the reports, which would make sense because there are a lot more insects in the southern United States. And uh, you have an animal that tends to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, Chester, you and your father created this life-size model of the southern Bigfoot, but you, you both also had your own encounter with this creature. My dad saw it come out of the edge of a clearing, and uh, he watched it for about a minute before he could get a word out. He was so like, oh my God, I can't believe we're actually seeing it. And he's like, look, look, look. And I'm like, huh, look. What I saw was a, a very uh, tall animal, about seven feet tall, dark hair, looked like brown hair. Uh, kind of a longish on top and it just went back in the brush real quickly and um, it, it pretty much fit consistently with the reports of southern Bigfoot creatures tall broad the shoulders stands down a little bit and then a uh, long long type hair so it was very exciting but too brief have you ever heard the southern Bigfoot or what you think is a southern Bigfoot make a sound like a vocalization one of them sounded very, very much like a howler monkey. It was no doubt a primate, but like a Kong-sized howler monkey. Very, very large animal. So loud, it almost rattled your chest, like a bass drum at like a Metallica show. Very, very intense, loud, incredible set of lungs. There's a recording uh, in, made in Ohio called the Ohio Recordings, and it was made by researchers there, and it was attributed to Bigfoot. And uh, some university here in Texas v verified that it was definitely uh, a non-human primate making that noise, and it was not like a known primate. So uh, we hear this noise quite frequently, and I can do a pretty good rendition of it. So uh, I'll do my best. But how could such a creature stay undercover for so long? Well, as we say, there are stranger things in heaven and earth, and my darlings, the strangest of all is Mother Nature. This is the Bigfoot crate. We've got all kind of, this is just in case hunting season and in case there are any hunters in the wood, this lets them know that we're not a deer. But this is the, the fun stuff. This is, these are bionic ears. And they'll let you, uh, you know, pick out sound directionally and we'll uh, let you record it as well. These are the uh, generation three night vision goggles that we use and uh, it'll help you see in pretty much no light conditions. But uh, pretty much uh, we use all this gear right here to try to get close to Bigfoot and maybe we'll get close tonight. Chester Moore and fellow Bigfoot researcher Chris Stevens are taking Daniel and Natalie to a secret location on the Texas-Louisiana border. According to Chester, this is Bigfoot Central. Chester and Chris have both seen and heard it repeatedly. Chester even claims that the creature threw sticks at him. This is an area there's been a lot of reports in, a lot of sightings, and we found I found tracks about 100 yards into there before. It's really thick, and unless an animal's walking in front of you, you're not gonna see it, and Bigfoot doesn't make a habit of walking in front of you very much. We've heard, actually, it's like something walking through the water toward us, and this ought to be a really good spot. All right, these are our camera traps here. Very simple setup. We've got a circuit board with a heat and motion sensor on it. If anything comes close or moves in front of the sensor, it gets set off. That automatically kickstarts the camera, which is sitting in standby, so it doesn't waste any batteries or anything like that. It starts recording as long as something's in front of the camera. As soon as there's not, it stops recording, shuts down, waits for the next animal to cross its path. Chester's brought us to this spot here. 
He's had a few encounters when camping up on the ledge behind us. There's been creatures moving through this forested piece around the pond here and um, never actually saw what it was because it just stays out of sight. This time we've got the camera traps up in the tree here. We're going to try and lure it in with some pheromone baits and uh, actually try and see what was making these noises. Many animals use pheromone signals, which are chemical hormones that are secreted from glands in the body that they use to attract the opposite sex. Now, I didn't think it was a good idea to use a pheromone bait because primates tend to use their vision more than their sense of smell. But from what Chester and Chris have told me, the Bigfoot in the area emit a very, very strong odour. So it may be worth giving the bait a go. We've decided against dropping down fruit and meat because Chester said that the times he's tried that before, it hasn't worked. So the pheromone bait might be the way to go. This smells really, really bad. I've placed the pheromone bait right in the line of Dan's camera trap. So if a big foot comes down this pathway, it's gonna smell the pheromone and get captured on Dan's camera trap. There's a perfect spot just there for a trap, up in that V, looking straight down that game trail. Yep, just went off. Just went off? Yep. It's a spot where something's wow. been laying. You can definitely see an impression of a, some kind of body under this shelter of these trees right here in the pine straw. Could be a feral hog or a couple of feral hogs, but it's interesting because we found these limb twists along the trail and uh, we find this nearby. Is that typical of the limb twists that you find? You can't say a lot because you know, the wind can blow them off after they hang mm -hmm. for a while, it's but I really don't call anything concrete till I see it actually, the tw actual twisting motion mm -hmm. or something bent over. On a live branch. Yeah, okay. you'll see something bent over, like an entire little tree bent and completely broke over like that. It's not something people go around doing bending trees over. Yeah. Or it, people can't twist a tree like that. Yeah. But it's just, if you find a lot in one particular area and it's not like storm damage type stuff, it, you know, makes you want to look around more. some stuff and we walked towards it and I saw something move behind a tree. Um, I had to look up at it and Chester estimated it to be about how high Chester? Six and a half, seven feet tall. I mean she showed me the spot on the tree she saw it at and it was about that, about that high. Yeah and I saw it move to the right mm -hmm. and so we started walking towards that and um, we were quite a ways into it and uh, we could hear something moving underneath the palmettos which are, which are these things mm -hmm. that are growing everywhere. And then as we got closer, we heard something off to the side of us make a really loud noise, like a, a, a branch snapping noise. Two things, you think yes. there's possibly two, okay. Yes. And that was up by the Yeah, the, 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 pond. The, the pond where we put the pheromones on, the back side of the ponds where we were walking towards. So I thought that was kind of interesting that the direction she said whatever it was moved was toward mm -hmm. the pheromones. Yeah. Yeah. So we might have actually flushed something down towards there a little bit. So. Exactly, that's what I think. And um, we found several limb breaks okay. and some limb formations. Yeah. Do you think that's significant though, that tree that's just been twist? Something definitely put it there like that. Yeah. And why would somebody walk in here and do that? I mean, and do that. hunters mark the trail with tape. Yeah. It's, and you can tell because the, the, if it was like that naturally, all the leaves would be pointing up to the sun. It's actually being put there like that. And nothing fell and made that happen. You know, that's fairly recent. Yeah, it is recent. So something had to actually go through some effort to, mm. to lodge that into here. Those twisted limbs and branches are puzzling. There's nothing in these woods that can twist limbs like that. Only a very strong human, or an even stronger Bigfoot. And why do they do it? Are they marking their territory? Are they mapping out their own route through the wilderness? Or trying to keep tabs on ours? It's 
now very dark. And guess what? Whatever was twisting those tree limbs has changed course and is coming our way. Scary stuff. And while we're following its trail, it's following ours. And it has the investigators seriously spooked. Could it be Bigfoot? I really don't know. I think it's... It's... it's really possible. The team has set up infrared camera traps and a FLIR thermal imaging device to see what it is. Okay, so one of the devices that we're using here is a thermal imaging device that we've um, run into this handycam so we can record all the images. Any animals that are going to come close or move by the area that we're going to stake out, their body temperature is a lot hotter than the cool environment that they're moving through, so they're going to stick out like sore thumbs. This is Nat and me testing out the FLIR thermal imager. See how our body heat makes us stand out against the cooler background. So, we're going to sit here. Here, if anything comes, we had to see it with the thermal, try and spot it with the infrared, and hopefully have a bit of luck. We've been tracking through the bush for a while to see if we could discover what had been breaking the branches. And quite suddenly, we heard this weird sound. It's not the call of any animal known to live in these woods. What an eerie sound. Just like the noise Chester Moore demonstrated to us earlier. We listened intently to see if we could hear it again. A second time we heard it. Was it Bigfoot? Or was Chester Moore trying to call one in? We needed to investigate further. We've just come back up the trail after bringing all the gear to the camp spot. And on the second run, we thought we spooked something. And there's been a whole heap of branches, large branches, snapped off the trail that we've just been on. And there was nobody here. So we're just going back up to have a second look. You freaked out? You a bit freaked out? I'm a bit freaked out because these branches are so big and they've been snapped off in various places and they've been strategically placed. Yeah, that's Yeah, good. that's what I was... That's another one. And there's another one a little bit further up. We found the weirdest thing of the two trail markers were stuck in the fork of a tree. Yeah. Pointing right the same direction. Exactly. Right where we were going, right where we were walking. Yeah, same direction. And then that's on the other side. That's a familiar thing with us. I've walked this path five times a day looking for stuff and didn't see any of this. Me too. Dan and I went to check one of the camera traps and we heard this scream, and it sounded like the scream that you've imitated before of a Bigfoot. It wasn't you, was it? No, it wasn't me. What was that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I hope it was just a falling branch. Well, it was a one. actually, but it, no, what you heard was, was a Bigfoot creature because Chris and I walked up the hill to use my cell phone to get some cell phone reception. And I was talking to my wife and it yelled out and then an owl in a tree right by us called back to it and that little uh, sound and then I was like, hold on, there's a Bigfoot yelling. And uh, that's the sound that, that's very, we call the primate yell. So that's as clear a Bigfoot vocal as you'll probably ever hear. Exactly. That was the closest I've heard that vocalization. And the second was one was me close. calling yes, back yes. trying to get it to, to yell, but it didn't, yeah. it wasn't buying it, you know. Exactly. And most animals will not come up to you like that. I mean, if it's a raccoon or, say, an armadillo, they're not going to come towards the light. They're not going to come and see what we're doing. They're going to go the opposite way. So it's, it's, a, it's very telling that whatever this animal is, it's curious enough to come and watch us. So do you guys think that there might be a Bigfoot around here right now? Absolutely. Yes, definitely. 
we set up our stealth cameras and thermal imager to look over a waterhole. We're hopeful that the creature might come down for a drink. There was little showing on the infrared cameras, but the FLIR thermal imager was working beautifully. Even picked up something swimming back and forth through the water. Then out of the blue, we saw this. Something's creeping along the shore, maybe on all fours, trying to hide itself. It stops momentarily behind the first tree and then moves on again, but then it disappears. That was just incredible. I'm mm. speechless. Yeah. Well, whatever was walking on the other side of that lake was behind a whole, whole bunch of bushes, but at least that high. Yeah, absolutely. And what it looked like to me is whatever it was might have been crouched down or kind of on all fours. And when it got behind the tree, it got taller. Yeah. You could see it definitely get taller and then go down. And we talked about these animals being on all fours a lot and then getting up to look and stuff like that. After we saw it. Yeah. We heard the scream. Yeah, so you know it's not me we making scream. We heard the scream. I know it's not you now. And it is very, very primate. It is primate. They're obviously very curious about us because they're hanging around. They're not leaving the area. Yeah. And we saw that one over there and we heard another one over mm -hmm. there. So there's at least a couple of them. There's, there's more than, there's a few of them in here. Mm -hmm. now, I cannot wait to check those camera traps. Oh, I know, morning. me either. How exciting was that, Natalie? I am just stunned. I, when I heard that really loud call earlier when Dan and I were checking the camera traps, I thought it was Chester. Thought, you know, this is, you know, we're not going to see anything. This is not real. And then when we, when I, when we caught it on film, and I saw this thing, and it did not look like a deer. I can't think of what animal it could be. And then hearing the calls afterwards, which are very primate-like. If I, I just can't wait to continue exploring and check the camera traps tomorrow, I just, it's, it's just so exciting. What do you think, Nat? Did you just encounter Bigfoot? I reckon there's a strong possibility that we may have seen some unknown primate. How about you, Daniel? What are your thoughts? I heard something move through the move, move on through the bush on the other side of, of the lake. It was tall, it looked like it had shoulders and a head. And it was either a tall man walking on the other side of the lake or an unknown primate. Do you think you've captured Bigfoot? We either have Bigfoot on tape or a person. Huh. You must be thrilled. Yeah, it's very exciting. And tomorrow when we check the camera traps, we'll be, we'll be, you know, that's the ultimate. When we can check the camera traps tomorrow, that's the location where he was walking, we'll know for sure. So, my darlings, something unbelievable seems to be happening in the Lone Star State. Our animal ex-investigators have something mysterious on tape. Add in those unexplained primate sounds, and it seems as though Bigfoot may well have come calling. But, as Daniel says, we won't know for sure until we've checked the infrared stealth cameras. There's our tracks. That's where I stood. Can you remember which tree? Right here. The framing is that large pine there and those four trees. Anyway, let's go check this camera trap. Oh, I can smell the pheromone bait. It's still working. Mm, watch where you tread. It looks like it's rolled a bit of tape. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah something. I'm really nervous. Because this is as good a chance as you yeah. probably ever get. I'd ever get to get one, because that was, you know, I would bet my life saving this, what we had oh. messing with this last night. And it was so close. I mean, it was within 75 yards of this trap. So and apparently, some, something set off the camera. 
Expectations are soaring. But, my darlings, you should never count your chickens before they're hatched. You see, the stealth camera was never triggered by the creature. Whatever the Fleur Thermal Imager caught last night didn't cross this path. Everything was working fine. He didn't come down that track. He came along the edge of the pond instead of right down, down the Down the game trail. The thing is, I think it knew that we were messing around in this area. It could have been observing us, and it may have avoided us for that reason. It may have avoided this particular spot and gone around. Never know. We'll never know. Very disappointed, obviously. This is the closest that we could have come to getting Bigfoot on the camera traps. We knew that it was walking around the area. We got the, um, the heat sensing image of it. It was so close. I wasn't expecting anything to be on the tape. I never am, otherwise you get your hopes up too high and this animal hasn't been seen and captured and proved yet, so it's obviously not going to be an easy task. But it was keeping a good watch. It was, it was sticking around. It didn't want to leave the area. It was very curious as to what we were doing and whether we were any threat. So that takes a lot of intelligence. Just having a camera trap out for one night, it's frustrating it being so close because we almost actually had found out what we saw. We would be able to say, OK, we saw this and we'd know for sure. But it doesn't surprise me that nothing's on the tape. <laughs> you cannot ignore it. You have to investigate it further. I'm convinced there's an unknown creature out here. Um, for sure, there's no doubt in my mind. Dan and Nat are disappointed, but still determined to get to the bottom of the strange image captured last night. Daniel has rigged up the thermal imager back on the edge of the lake, lining up last night's shot to get a true measure of the beast. OK, so the thermal imaging pictures that we got last night, we've now hooked up to the camera and we can look in the daytime exactly what trees we were looking at last night. And that way we can line up how far away it was, how tall the creature was, and actually find out what exactly we were looking at. So now that we've lined all that, we're going to ask Chester to go over there and see if we can recreate what we actually saw last night. The problem with using these thermal imaging devices is that the trees where the creature was walking through looked very far away, and hence the creature looked very big. But looking at it during the daytime, when we've got reference points all around us, the trees look a lot closer. So maybe the creature that we saw was a lot smaller than we thought. But we'll check it out. Okay, shall we do a test run? Head yeah. that way right now. So the one close to the water and then the one behind the palms. Sure. Thanks, man. OK. Well, we can see you as a reference point. I'll get you to go behind that tree, because that's the one that it came from. Probably just that far off. Mm -hmm. You can see that Chester Moor looks quite large. Now compare it to the creature filmed last night. Harrison looks quite a bit smaller. But when Chester squats down, he appears around the same size as the creature. Now, have a look at this. It's a bit obscured by the target mark on the screen, but to me, this looks like a gorilla walking on all fours. But Dan and Nat still aren't convinced what they saw was actually a primate. We'll get Chester to do the walk just along the pond there. Yeah. To see how big he is. Yeah. Chester, can I get you to walk in front of those palms along and behind that first tree to your. On, uh, two legs or four? On two legs. Okay, just tell me when. Okay, go. Oh, look, he's massive. Yeah. Keep coming. Yep. Yeah, he's massive. And 
touch the tree that the thing disappeared behind. Mm. Chester, can you have a look and see if there's any tracks around where you are? Yeah, there are not very many tracks around, but there's a lot of spots where feral hogs have been here rooting the ground up. So it could have been a hog or maybe an armadillo. Yeah, armadillo or something. It was something very small, whatever it was. Are we absolutely sure? Yep, positive. I am disappointed because I really got myself all excited. I thought it was a much larger anim animal. I thought it was much further away. I thought it was walking through the palms and I looked at the palms and thought, this animal has got to be huge. And I jumped to conclusions because I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to find Bigfoot. But it's a small animal and it just goes to show that you really need to check your facts before you get fully excited. It's disappointing that we didn't get Bigfoot, of course, but not unexpected. And yeah, it's, that's why you have to come back and do the tests and make sure that you just can't go off one experience and one image and, and go make jumping to conclusions without actually properly looking at what we've recorded and the evidence and, and testing it. So it's back to square one. But Dan and Ned don't have to go far before they find more unexplained phenomena. Three limbs have been broken recently, broken and twisted all round the camp. <laughs> it's Bigfoot's trademark. Yeah, these are pretty amazing. One, two, three. Now, you guys didn't notice this at all the first time you came up before us, did you? No, we've been trekking this way all day long and nobody else been through here. and. Uh... And when we came through about 50 yards that way, we heard something big go through the brush, actually the palmetto flapping as it went past. And then we went in and got our stuff from camp and came back and we could hear something following us back that way. And it, it sounded like it stopped and we went back and we met you guys up and we came back through and this was here and a bunch more along the way. But this is the most pronounced because you know this is very fresh. And, uh, Really interesting. It really bugs you because you're going, what the heck's it doing that for? You know, mm -hmm. Is it territory? Is it nervous? Is it mad? You know, what's going on? But uh, there's definitely a lot of this that appeared last night. And I've never had that happen. I've never had a limb breaks, limb twist appear during an, an investigation. An investigation. Mm -hmm. It seems as though something was stalking us. It certainly had been keeping a close eye on us. In fact, too close an eye because as Nat and I were doing a piece to camera, something in the woods caught her attention. I mean, it, there's a possibility it could have set it off. I've seen the red light, because it does take a couple of seconds for the camera to actually start recording after the sensor's been tricked. Hey. I just saw something. Oh, sorry. I heard the crash, this crash, and then I looked over there and it looked like this round, brown thing. Yeah, well, it stopped, whatever it is. As in, kept moving. Like that, I don't know if you can see through there, yeah. those leaves were sort of rustling, yeah. Did it keep moving or did it stay still? No, and then it stopped. Well, if it's still there, I'll just run over there and see if anything moves. Oof. Yeah. Maybe we can spook it. Did Natalie see? Is this the face of a Bigfoot? While Dan heads into the woods, let's take a closer look at what happened and see what we can see. After Natalie saw something moving in the forest, our cameraman Jimmy Freighter swung round to the direction Natalie was pointing. Let's look at it, frame by frame. Now, what do you make of that? Is this the face of Bigfoot? Is this the creature opening its mouth? Let's take a closer look. Zoom in and sharpen it up a bit. Too hard to make out. Jimmy shoots the same spot again, this time 
face is gone. He saw that, but I didn't need to. Yep. Yeah, it's one of mine. Yeah. If it was a face at all. But Natalie is dead sure she saw something out there. I mean, it really caught my attention because I was so focused on talking about this log, and then I heard this big rustling over there. It didn't sound like very far away. And then I turned, ran up, jumped over, and then I could see this very dark, furry creature. It seemed like it was hunched down to me. It seemed like it was, I don't know, about that height. It's hard to tell because it was only a glimpse. But it seemed to sort of, it sounded like it was walking bipedally. I, I don't know. Didn't actually hear it taking off. Either it's very silent at running through the, through the bush or it is extremely well camouflaged. It can just freeze and become part of the landscape. I don't know what it was, but it caps off a very, very strange night and it continues to get weirder. And I'm not jumping to conclusions and saying this is a Bigfoot that we're seeing and hearing and finding evidence of, but it's certainly very strange. I don't know. But as we head back to camp, weird things keep happening. We were gathering up our stealth cameras, except someone or something had beaten us to them. Oh, no. A branch has been snapped off. That's where the, I don't know. It's just strange. The camera trap's been pulled down. Do you think it was deliberately pulled down? Well, it was either deliberately pulled down or the branch snapped back by itself. It's one of the two. This doesn't look very rotten. It's not. It's actually quite it is a little bit, but... I mean, it was quite strong when you set it up yeah, the other very day. Well, that's weak. It takes a bit of strength. I didn't think the winds were that strong last night that it would blow a big branch like that down. Makes me think that somebody knows what we're trying to do here. What do you think? Either it was pulled down deliberately or the branch snapped accidentally. Hmm. Oh, well, just have to wait and see. We've got one camera trap left, so we're going to get that one. Okay. This it's one, spot? yep, it's gone. Is there? It's right here. Oh, you're joking. And the pheromone's gone as well. Makes Why would someone take the camera and the pheromone? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Maybe there's more to this Bigfoot thing then we realise. Someone out there doesn't want us to find it. Maybe. Maybe there's a few people that don't want us to find it. People don't want Bigfoot found? Could that be true? Think of what would happen if a mythic creature was proven to live in these woods. Huh. Next thing you know, the forest would be crawling with tourists and trophy hunters. People who would do anything to prevent that from happening. Just harking back to the stealth camera that appeared to be ripped out of the tree. Back at camp, Daniel and Natalie solved the riddle. Not a human or a Bigfoot. What was that? Vultures. But a more straightforward natural mystery. <laughs> Vultures. Look at that. It's like. Wow, there's a whole stack of 20 them. vultures or something, just ripping it apart. All vultures. So. And we still don't know what knocked down the camera. No, it just crashed to the ground. Maybe there was a bunch of vultures sitting on the... Mm. And that's it? That's when it crashed? I know Daniel and Natalie want to stay at this location longer, but unfortunately, time and money won't allow. Maybe we can come back at another time on a special animal expedition. But to find out more about the Texas Bigfoot, I've sent Dan and Nat to meet Detective Jimmy Chilcott. 
Detective Chilkit has examined more than one million human fingerprints and hundreds of primate finger and footprints. In Jimmy Chilkut's professional life, he collects evidence for criminal investigations. And in the process, he's built up a reputation as an expert in the forensic crime technique of dermal ridging and an almost cult following amongst Bigfooters. Okay, I, I'm actually employed by the Conroe Police Department here in Conroe, Texas, but I've actually done work for the FBI, U.S. Customs, uh, the Secret Service, uh, the Department of Public Safety, which is our state police, uh, their narcotics uh, task force, and uh, the DEA, which is the, the federal uh, drug enforcement. They've actually brought cases to me to process in my lab, and I've actually made matches and put bad guys in jail. Do you believe that Bigfoot exists? When you say believe, I cannot go in front of a jury in a courtroom and say, I believe this man is guilty. I have to show where I've examined evidence and proved without a shadow of a doubt that he is guilty. So when you, when you ask me, do I believe in Bigfoot? It's not a question of belief. It's a question that I've examined physical evidence that indicate that yes, there is a primate out there. Okay, Jimmy, do you think that we have proof beyond reasonable doubt that there is a Bigfoot creature out there? Well, to me, I have positive proof from the evidence that I've examined. You know, it is positive proof to me as a, not only a human fingerprint expert, but as a primate fingerprint expert. The dermal ridges that I've examined on several castings, supposedly Bigfoot castings, is positive proof that there is an animal out there. what actually are dermal ridging? Well, dermal ridges are the, the friction ridges that you find on the, the bottom of your feet, uh, on your fingertips, on the palm of your hands. These are called friction ridges or dermal ridges or dermatoglyphics. Is it possible to fake dermal ridgings in a casting? I would think anything and nowadays would, uh, it's possible to fake, but I examined these castings for you know, several days, several months, before I actually made a determination that these weren't uh, fake, these were actual dermal ridges, then that in itself is proof positive that a primate made those prints, made those impressions in order to get that casting. So what are the differences between, say, human dermal ridgings and, and the ridgings that you found on the castings? Well, on the a human footprint, the dermal ridges on the bottom of your foot and my foot, they tend, tend to go across the width of the foot in that direction. On the big foot casting that I've examined, the ridges flow down the side of the foot, and that does not happen either in humans or in non-human primates that we have studied or we know about. Okay. So does that mean that the casts that you found that have the dermal ridges definitely aren't humans? They're definitely not humans. This cast, the drum ridges on this cast, prove that the animal who made this impression is a primate of some sort. But, but it's a primate that we've never studied or fully documented because it's something completely different. Right. So if this was, say, a human's footprint in, in a court of law and this was your evidence and you had the person standing there and they matched, it would be enough to put them away. Most certainly, most certainly, because it, there is enough characteristics in this cast to make a positive identification. If I had this animal laid out and I took the bottom of his, took an impression of the bottom of his print, I could match it to uh, this cast. That's pretty good evidence. Does it get much better than that? I haven't found a, a casting that had better uh, and clearer dermal ridges in this cast. Has Detective Chilkut proven the existence of Bigfoot? Matt's about to ask him the $64,000 question. So as an expert, is it case closed on Bigfoot? As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, yes. There, there is an animal out there. Whether you call him Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, Yowie, or Hairy Man, you know, whatever you call him, there is an animal out there that we have not captured, we have not fully uh, studied. 
The only thing we have is the footprints from the ground. Do you have hope that one day somebody will find the carcass of a Bigfoot? Well, not really, you know. It's, from the evidences I've examined, you know, it's enough for me just to know that there's an animal out there. And I'm never going to go out and actually hunt for a Bigfoot or uh, look for uh, this animal. Uh, it's kind of, when I examine this evidence, I kind of get that warm feeling inside that, that this animal exists and uh, very few people have seen him. And that's kind of exciting. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of in his corner. I hope he never gets captured. Well, you can't get more positive than that. As far as our ace detective is concerned, yes. Bigfoot is out there. I must say, I never expected to have so many strange encounters over such a short period of time. And I mean, the potential sighting we had back there, I mean, I didn't know what it was, but whatever it was, it looked pretty large. It really does sound like a large primate. It is encouraging, even though we've been here for a short amount of time, having seen and heard all these things in the couple of days that we've been here. It does point to the fact that there's something here and needs further investigation. There's a secret lurking out there somewhere, deep in the heart of Texas. The Natural Mystery Unit hasn't brought back proof positive, but between the strange primate calls, the unexplained limb twists, and that flicker of a face in the forest, it's obvious. The mystery of the Texas Bigfoot is far from solved. There are stranger things in heaven and earth, and you've just seen one of them on Animal X.